In this video, we are exploring one of the oldest beverages in history, wine. We're going through the entire ancient process of harvesting both cultivated grapes and foraging for wild grapes, and even experimenting with some other fruits as well, then processing and fermenting them into our own ancient wine. Let's give it a shot and see how it turns out. Everything we use comes from 8,000 generations of collective innovation and discovery. But could an average person figure it all out themselves and work their way from the Stone Age to today? That's the question we're exploring. Each week, I try to take the next step forward in human history. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next step in this journey. Some things like wine only get better with age, but it's not true with everything, especially your hairline. Two out of three guys will experience male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. If that's something you're concerned about, then you might be interested in today's sponsor. Keeps offers the only two FDA approved hair loss treatments out there and has more five star reviews than any of its competitors. Getting and using it is really simple. You just visit a doctor online and get it delivered straight to your home. The best way to prevent baldness is to combat it while you still have hair. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash HTME or click the link in the description and receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash H-T-M-E. Fruits like grapes naturally have the microorganism of yeast on them, which naturally converts the sugars in them into alcohol. This makes wine likely the earliest alcoholic drink, considering how easily it could be accidentally made. The earliest evidence dates to at least 7,000 BCE. Wine can be made from many different fruits and crops, but it is most commonly made from grapes, which first began to be cultivated for winemaking in the Near East. First up, we tried to forage a wild variety of grapes for our wine. North America has its own varieties of grapes that are historically a part of the diet of Native Americans, but weren't considered usable for wine by Europeans. In Minnesota, one common type is the Riverbank grapes, which seems to grow pretty much everywhere. All right, I got one. So we got some wild grapes here, or riverbank grapes, that are very edible and we can make some wine out of. Intermixed with it are these guys, which I believe are buckthorn berries. And these will make you go poop. We also have some Virginia creeper, and those will kill you. Okay, be very careful which ones we pick. They're a little picked over from birds and what else, but uh, there's still a fair amount here. That is not what I'm after. I think that's a Virginia creeper. Well, what is it connected to? Yeah, that's, that's the creeper. This is the grapevine. And this is the bushweed. Yeah. Oh yeah, lots of that. It smells nice, actually. Very citrusy. Poison. Grab the whole thing. Grapes. Oh yeah, nice one. Neat the leaves, too. That's a lot here. Tarzan it. <laughs> this is gonna take a while. <laughs> One form of native North American grapes that were specifically cultivated for winemaking are Concord grapes, which we also found a supply of growing near our studio. We also want to try fermenting a different type of fruit that we had a bountiful supply of, growing both in our indoor and outdoor gardens, tomatoes. That's what I'm talking about. See you later. Next, the rest of our fruits need to be mashed up, traditionally done by stomping them with your feet. First step in taking my shoe off is to slip my foot out from my shoe. Okay, uh, I guess I'll just jump in. Stomp. Stomp. <laughs> Whew, well stomping's hard work. Fitness, just one leg at a time. It's for experts only. <laughs> to contain and ferment our wine, we created a set of ceramic vases called amphoras.
Oftentimes, these vessels would depict famous events and battles. So Lauren captured the events of the infamous Melon Wars. Lastly, for a more traditional wine, we paid a visit to the locally grown vineyard of Jed to help harvest their cultivated wine grapes. You look great! Good job, Ariel. I'm very strong. <laughs> to be more cold hardy in Minnesota, they're actually a hybrid of traditional old world cultivated grapes in the North American wild riverbank grapes. All right, so you just take your container and then just go up to the base of it, clip that, and then just toss her in. And then, yeah, just uh, start clipping. And watch out for hornets. And then these are great drink holders, these pillars. There's a lot of good ones on here though. All right. Ta-da! Here, let me get you a clip. Or are you doing super traditional? I can't cheat, Jed. <laughs> I clip. There's a lot more grapes here than in the parking lot. <laughs> Ariel, my thing's full. <laughs> Thanks, Ariel. <laughs> yeah, not my face. <laughs> oh yeah, look at the hornet. There's a huge hornet, like that's black. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. Jed, you're supposed to know. Yeah, he looks like a bad guy. There are a lot of bees out here. The only way to pick wine is to drink wine. Dump. I love a good dump. The bees are like, I didn't like that. <laughs> I was not ready for the dump. Wow, I picked all of these by myself. <laughs> oh shit. The bees don't like liars. <laughs> Here we're gonna uh, de-stem the grapes. So you wanna take a clump, okay. put it on top of the milk crate, and then roll back and forth to release the grapes oh. from the stem. So this is a 20 gallon fermenter, so we'll see how much we get. And you can ferment them without having stomped on them, but it's more fun to just <laughs> get in there. So then you can just step from here. Yeah, it's just water. Oh, it's warm, thank you. Yeah, just you get really in there, work in there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God, this is super bizarre. So I was in the this kind of feels nice. <laughs> it's exfoliating from the sea. No hornets yet? I don't think I've been stung yet. Which is... No, you're not gonna get stung. And I know I've said that like seven times and Andy's been stung three times. <laughs> and Just twice, so far. <laughs> All right. There's still time. Kind of like a nice little massage. Is it cool? No, it's pretty warm actually. <laughs> I'm just hoping I don't fall over like the newscaster. <laughs> a lot of fun, a whole day. Stop. Oh, oh. We do. Jed, can Andy and I switch? No, we can. Yeah. <laughs> no. Squeege. Ooh. Interesting sensation. How does it feel? Kind of good. I know, it's not too bad. What are you doing? <laughs> oh. <The lens. laughs> All the wild yeast and the wine yeast that we use, it takes about 10 days uh, fermenting. Then this just gets put in a ratchet press and squeezed out. How many bottles do you think you get out of that? Maybe 20 bottles. Wow. Which is not a lot, but yeah, it's about half of what we got last year. So for our wine, you know, we've picked it from the vine, we've de-stemmed it, we've crushed it. What should we do next? If you had fresh juice like this, you would uh, either not add any of the sulfites and have natural yeast take its course. Is that okay? You could end up with vinegar. Different bacteria would turn it into vinegar, which is like acetic acid, and then you get a red wine vinegar. If we don't have that, which is we haven't made that, so like we'll just 
see what happens. Yeah. All right, thanks to Lauren and her little feet, we were able to crush up all the different fruits. So we got tomato, the uh, vineyard grapes, and then some wild grapes, and we can try them out. But we're just going to strain out the solids, put them in here, add some yeast, seal them up, and let them ferment for about 15 days. All right, so I got the tomatoes, and supposedly it's supposed to come out clear, so I'm gonna put it in this clear bottle so we can actually see it, also because Lauren's is a little leaky. All right, so it's been about 15 days, and uh, everything should be fermented or rotted. Okay. Give it a shot. So we got the three wines, we got our vineyard wine, we got our wild grape wine, and then we got the tomato wine. <laughs> that one will be interesting. I'm a little concerned about that one. We got our beautiful vase. Ooh. All right, should we start with the vineyard? Clink. <laughs> hmm. It's a little sour. Yeah, it's kind of um, vinegary. That might have happened. Yeah. <laughs> Do we like this? I like it. Okay. I drink it. Next. Smooth. <laughs> Don't chug your... <laughs> That's a wine tasting. Mm. <laughs> Let me just use them. The next one, the wild wine. This is a nice little pineapple getting speared. Right in the melon. Right in the melon. Da -da. Pineapples are not melons, so... Ooh, this one has a lighter color, I think. I gave you extra. <laughs> oh, wow, it smells way different. It doesn't really taste like wine. It doesn't have a strong flavor. It's good. Yeah, it's got like a, a slight fruity flavor, but like not really grapes. Yeah, it almost tastes just like a Saison, like a sour beer. It's a very astute observation. Where did, you. Where did you come up with that? I just found it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a Kool-Aid. It's easy to drink, but uh, not much of a flavor. Much more mellow. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's wild? Like a... A wa m mellow wild. A mellow wild, all right. <laughs> Otherwise known as mild. <laughs> okay, tomato wine. Is this a real thing? Did yeah, you okay. it's a real thing, I guess. It's a white wine. It would pair well with sp spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the wine expert called? A sommelier? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Sommelier. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. It tastes like if you ate tomato soup and then someone like breathed on you. Yeah, that one gets a no from me. Yeah, that's probably the worst one. I don't know if there's alcohol in it. I don't know if there's any good flavor in it. So it's just kind of not worth it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like going for more. Oh yeah. All right, so I think it turned out pretty good. Um, the cultivated vineyard wine, I think, was a little bit better, a little bit stronger flavor. A little bit rougher around the edges, but I think that might be a little bit more authentic to the time. We had a lot of secondary fermentation stuff. It might be giving a little bit extra sourness. The wild wine, also pretty good, a little bit more mellow. And the tomatoes are it's just a horrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys all for watching, and continue to support us on Patreon. So. 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 <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.